Hi, I'm Adam McDonald from McDonald Innovations. I'm here with the Auto Trickler V4. This is the third video in a series. Um, we've already covered the unboxing and initial setup of the system. And in the previous video, we showed the basics of tuning for performance using Fargate, which is a pretty average powder. But we've got three other powders that are very different in their shape and size. So I'm gonna show how you could tune for each one and quickly switch between them, uh, set up profiles in the app for each one. Uh, and especially handle this last one, which is N570, which has huge kernels. So we're just gonna switch this over and we'll do uh, H335 first, which is a fine ball powder, um, because this one will flow very well, very quickly, and we can see how fast it can go. So we've put the powder into the auto trickler and the first thing we're going to do is calibrate. So the calibration just finished and we have a small tube measured flow rate of 0.24. Uh, it's a bit high, but for this powder, because the kernels are so fine and it flows so smoothly, that's actually going to be just fine. Um, so we'll proceed with this. Um, we've got our settings set uh, basically to what they were for Varget, pretty standard settings. Um, so let's just um, let's just try a powder charge of 40 grains and see how it goes. Usually after calibrating, the first cycle or two will be a bit faster until the level of powder in the tubes sort of settles. So this powder flows really well, and it's actually really easy to tune. And it kind of shows that um, you don't have to redo the tuning every time when you switch powders. Um, when you run the calibration, it measures the change in flow rate. This powder flows a little bit faster than Varget did, so the motors ran a little bit slower, and the same tuning settings are actually pretty good for this powder. Okay, so this powder is pretty much working perfectly with the same settings as before. Um, I guess we're done with this one. We'll move on to uh, H4350. Okay, so now for this powder, we'll start by uh, priming the tubes. And I'm just gonna tilt it forward just to help it flow faster at the beginning. Once I see the powder start flowing, and now we're ready to calibrate. So the calibration finished. Uh, for this one, we have a measured flow rate of 0.22. Again, that's maybe a little bit high, but pretty close to 0.2. Uh, I think we'll just go with it, and it'll probably be fine. So these kernels weigh around 0.03. 0.035. Typically, we would want to either accept plus or minus 0.02 or maybe plus or minus 0.04, depending on how precise you need to be for what you're doing. Um, so just keep that in mind that we don't want everything to be perfect. We're willing to accept some tolerance when we're using a larger kernel powder like this. So I'm going to set a target of 40 grains just with the settings we have and see what happens to start from. So the transition was too late. So you may, may have been able to hear that when it transitioned, the small tube started at a very low speed because it transitioned too close to the target. So something is not perfectly correct with this one. Even though it finished on the right value, it won't be efficient if we leave it like this. So we're gonna change the transition so it transitions sooner. There's the transition, full speed, full speed, then it starts slowing down. Uh, it slowed down very quickly, um, but the 2.5 might have been a little much, so let's go back to two and try to optimize that a little bit. Full speed, slow down. Okay, and as far as the finish speed goes, it seems pretty fast. Uh, it actually went over by 0.06 there, and the first few ones, even though they were right on, were really quick. 
Um, so we're being a little too aggressive, so we're gonna lower the finish speed a bit. Because of this larger kernel powder, a finish speed of seven is probably a little too high. So let's put it back to five, which would be the kind of the average default. Bit slower, bit smoother. Kind of slows right down at 0 0.92, 0 0.94. That's what we want to see. Then the last kernel, last kernel or two would drop reliably. Generally, if you're loading a tray of ammo, you would do this tuning while you're loading. So when you're doing the first few, if they're on the mark, you take them. But if you felt like it was too fast or too slow, then you just tweak the value and try the next one. 9.2, 9.8, stopped. So it dropped a couple kernels at once and stopped at 9.8, which is okay. Okay, so this is really good. I would say we're pretty much done with tuning this one. So we had to increase the transition a little bit and we had to lower the finish speed a little bit. So I can actually save these changes as a profile within the app. Profile one is highlighted. Then I can tap on the name and I can enter a name for this profile. And now profile one will be my settings for H4350. And then I'll switch to profile two for my next powder. And now we're gonna move on to N570, which is a very, very large powder. So just to recap the process, close the hopper and remove it. And then we can empty most of the powder in by lifting the window. Then don't forget to disconnect the V4 before you raise it up. Tilt it back, raise the window, give it some taps. Then we make sure that there's no powder in the back and it's empty. Open this correctly over the jug and we can empty the powder right down. So the kernels of N570 are around 0.1 to 0.12 grains. Um, that's really big. There's no way we can expect plus or minus 0 0.02 of precision. Really, we're looking for plus or minus 0.04 or plus or minus 0.06 because the kernels are 0.1 or more. Um, so with that tolerance in mind, we also need to keep in mind that this will flow very differently and we'll probably have to tilt the scale for this powder to work. I'm just gonna run the small tube and tilt it forward to get it to start flowing like we did before. Now I'll release and we'll probably see it stop. Because the powder is so big, it just doesn't flow the same way. We need to tilt everything forward. So I know at this point, I'm going to have to tilt the scale forward. But if I was to turn the wheels on the front of the scale, then I wouldn't be able to easily put it back to use the other powders. Since all the other powders work at this uh, leveling angle, I kind of want to leave that the way it is and adjust it in a way that I can easily reverse it. So the best way to do that is with some kind of shim. So I have here a stack of business cards and the best place to place this would be under the back center foot of the scale because it's a single point that's far away from the front so that it will be less sensitive to tiny changes. So now with the scale tilt forward a little bit, I'm gonna press slow so the tube will run consistently. So in this position as it is now, we can see that the flow is coming out fairly steadily and consistently. And we can see on the scale display that the number is counting up steady uh, and it might be a good time to calibrate and see where we're at. But we want to keep an eye on this part while it's calibrating to make sure that it continues to flow. If we notice that the powder stops flowing or for some reason it's going way too quickly, then we might want to just cancel it and try again. Um, so here we see that it's the weight on the scale is increasing steadily. So the calibration finished and we have a measured flow rate of 0.22. That's perfect. It's right where we want it. Um, but we have to adjust the tilt of the scale to reach that with this powder. When we go back to the other powders, we just need to remove that shim, put the scale back to the way it was, calibrate, and we should be back where we were before. You may be concerned that the amount that we had to tilt it, which was quite a bit of a large shim in the back of the scale, could affect how the scale weighs. In reality, it doesn't really matter all that much at all. So to demonstrate that, I have the calibration weight, and we see that the calibration weight now measures 99.998 grams because the percentage that this is off from 100.000 is so small 
that it doesn't even matter at all when we're weighing much smaller powder charges. Now we've calibrated with N570. We have a small tube flow rate of 0.22. Um, we'll leave the settings as they were from the previous powder and see what we get when we dispense, say, 40 grains. So the initial part was good. It's pretty close. The initial part and the transition was okay, but once the small tube started, there was a lot of powder at once, and we could hear the motor go oof, right down to a slow speed. So that's what's important to understand with this kind of powder. The kernels are so heavy that it only takes one kernel to jump you from just below your threshold to over your threshold. So really you have to expand your tolerance to be plus or minus one kernel with every powder, including the ones that are really heavy kernels. So let's try to reduce that by lowering finish speed by one notch. We'll put it to four. And I'm gonna increase buffer to 0 0.08, just so it runs slower at the very end just to avoid the chance of two kernels falling at once. Transition a bit closer than I would like, and it overshot because of it. So I'm actually gonna increase the transition. This powder is inconsistent in how it flows, so we saw every time before that it transitioned okay, but this time it was too close to the target. That's why the small tube immediately had to drop in speed, which is not good. So we're gonna increase the transition to three, and try again. Full speed. Slow down, nice and smooth. Stop right on. Um, and if it does go over by one or two more kernels, you don't necessarily have to dump the whole charge and start over. You can just remove one kernel and then either accept it or just double check it and then accept it. Um, so it really only costs you five seconds or so if it goes over. Um, so you want to adjust the settings to be efficient and fast and smooth knowing that it will go over once in a while, and that's okay because it only costs you five seconds. It's a lot better than having the settings be much slower all the time, losing time on every single one. Thank you for watching. I um, hope you've enjoyed these three videos on setup and tuning your Auto Trickler V4. If you're having any difficulty setting up your V4 and tuning it to work as well as you've seen this one here today, please feel free to take a video of your setup and show us a few example cycles. Send us an email and we'll get back to you right away with some advice. Thank you for watching.